Hi guys, I'm Stefano from Web Your Mind and welcome to this lesson of Laravel 5 course. In this lesson we will talk about uh, forms and validators. Because of form components uh, was removed from the core of Laravel 5, we need to reinstall. So let's open the composer.json file and uh, add uh, Laravel Collective slash HTML version 5, like uh, this. Um, we have to put in the required section, obviously. Now uh, let's do this. And the second thing is to add a provider and um, and uh, aliases in app.php so let's add uh, the end of the provider list collective slash html slash html service provider and at, and at the end of the aliases section uh, two alias form and uh, html like you see in the, in the video so collective html form facade and the collective html for html facade now uh, we have to run the composer. We have to run a composer update in order to download and install uh, the new the new package. And uh, meanwhile, we are regenerating auto loading files. So let's issue the command. As you can see, it is updating. Uh, composer is running. It has installed the Laravel Collective HTML, and uh, it has generated the um, auto load files. Okay. Perfect. Here we have uh, the old uh, menu.blade.php file. I rename it into lesson8 uh, underscore menu.blade.php file uh, just to have a backup of what we are doing. Uh, to, to we, we can do um, a comparison between all the new every, in every moment. Uh, in order to do this, uh, I changed the, the roots uh, files too and the new order controller in order to serve uh, this view and as, as you can see this method uh, returns simply return uh, the lesson 8 uh, menu view let's take a quick look to the old form it's very raw and very simple and now i show you how i change the code i already done it indeed because there's a lot of boilerplate code and i don't want to annoying uh, annoying you so here's the new form and uh, as you can see i use uh, some bootstrap classes just to make uh, the form a little less ugly than uh, it was uh, than what it was uh, just before uh, you can see a lot of reference to bootstrap classes like uh, column uh, uh, y width and uh, and offsets form group but i don't want to go deep down now with bootstrap because it's not uh, uh, one of the topic of this course we are using it just to make a little better form so let's start from the beginning we have the form open tag uh, nothing new than what we have in the previous version as you can see then uh, we can see th we have two more elements uh, as a parameter of the of the open method role and the class uh, don't worry about that uh, later on we we will uh, inspect the the source the, the web page and i show you that these elements uh, how how these uh, elements reflect on the final code then i add the form group it is uh, another bootstrap class and here i i prepared uh, a label as you can see for the and uh, a field name it is a number uh, label uh, takes uh, some parameters we have a label for the first parameter uh, references the, the field uh, the input field uh, below menu list is the, the actual actual text of the array of the label and the third parameter is an array we can pass it some uh, other uh, attributes of the uh, tag element of the element label tag element label then i have a for each 
and it is exactly the same that what we have uh, in the previous version of the page but uh, we have here some uh, elements more to make it a real uh, form and not just some scratch code on a web page then we have another form group with uh, a label and a checkbox instead of the of text field uh, like a number text field uh, it's exactly the same as bef just before so we have the, the first parameters of the label that references the name of the of the input field uh, let's go on we have another uh, form uh, form group with a text uh, element and another form group with an email field and then the last one is uh, another text for each of them we have uh, we have added some uh, classes some other attributes that we will see later on in the in the source code of the web page okay the last item we have in the in the form is uh, the submit button uh, first parameter is the, the label and then we have some other uh, an array that will contain that contains attribute finally we have uh, at the bottom of the class um, the the last i mean i'm talking about the last section here a uh, that section uh, we have a kind of error messaging uh, feeded by the validator class from the back end we will see it uh, in a minute now i will want to show you how the new form is rendered so let's go to our uh, old url menu slash all and here we have the form it's a little better than the previous one so we have two text to field number field um, here we are form number there are two items because there are two rows in the in the table there are two kind of two pizzas and we are in a loop then we have a checkbox olio picante and here we have the checkbox the, then we have a text field followed by an email field and another text field okay and the button obviously and here we have the text field the email uh, first uh, the name of the the input field the value the placeholder value and then the uh, class css class the same for the element uh, label element the email we have the field name email we have as a second parameter the placeholder and the third parameter is the array we contain that contains the the css class you may ask him why there's a zero here it's because i set the, the value of the field in this case it's the second parameters of the of the method the same thing is for the other fields so stefano is the value and inspecting here we have that uh, we have an input width with the width the mean value the max value the type number and value zero now if we can if we expect your name field we have the class form control name name the name of the field is name type is text value is stefano and id is name in order to make things work uh, let's go and see how i change the post order function first of all let's import the validator illuminate support facades validator and then uh, let's uh, do some changes in the in the post order that is the action called by our form so uh, basically i added some uh, some code here this one and, uh, and now i'm showing i'm telling you what it does first of all uh, laravel has uh, this object validator uh, it is a simple object that takes uh, two parameters in input in for the make uh, the make function the first one is the input method and the second one is an array of rules validator compares and matches these rules and then it exposes a fails method 
In this method, um, if, a, if a, it returns true, it means that the validation uh, somewhere has failed. And then we can handle uh, the, the error in here. Uh, otherwise, uh, if things go uh, well, uh, I have uh, just a little uh, log trace and uh, nothing more than the returning the view, or, uh, raising the two, if you remember, two events and then array, uh, return the view. Let's talk about the rules uh, array. Uh, each item of this array has um, an index that is the field name of the input, one of the input. So pizza marinara matches one of the input fields of, the, of our form. Olio, the same, name, email, free order, it's the, exactly the same. As you can see, free order, email, name. Uh, in the perfect exactly like that the dish in this case we have a dynamic field dish that is pizza marinara and pizza margherita uh, the value of the item is another array with a set of rules to be matched in order to pass the validation so for example uh, we have pizza marinara it is defined as required, so must exist. It is an integer and must be between zero and three. That means that the length of the, of the number must be from zero to three. So from zero to 999, it's a three, three digit number. Uh, those validation rules are re also repeated in the form, but this is a client-side uh, validation, and this one with uh, the validator is a back-end-side, more robust validation kind. Uh, as you can see, in the other fields, uh, we have different kind of validation rules. We have um, minimum and maximum. Uh, some, some of them, um, this is not required, for example. So it uh, doesn't matter if, if uh, it is a validate present or not in the input array. Um, the same thing, uh, we can say this uh, name and email are uh, at the moment uh, two text simple text field with a length from uh, 0 to 20. And free order is uh, must, uh, must exist in the table menu uh, corresponding to the column dish. So this is a direct match with the database uh, table. Uh, we are telling Laravel to check if on the table menu exists a um, free order in the column dish there, has, there is the value represented by the free order input. As you can guess there are lots of rules and I encourage you to go to the Laravel documentation and uh, try to all to discover there. After declaring the rule array, we have to declare the validator. So, and then uh, test uh, if the validation has failed. Validation uh, returns, in case of failure, return an array of messages. So we have to loop uh, on this array in order to uh, get a, a, a string. Um, in this case, I'm uh, chaining uh, the various uh, elements of the as array to uh, have uh, a single log uh, line. Then, uh, in case of failure, we redirect back with errors passing the validation, the validator. Um, in this way, Laravel automatically matches on the, on the form the fields uh, with uh, errors. This structure will be uh, show at the end of the form um, and now I'm going to show you the code exactly at the end of the form we have uh, we remember the section with errors if uh, the validation error as method will pass and then we loop on the errors array now let's try to uh, do some test on this on this form first of all let's submit it as is with default with all default values and the, we can see that we, everything goes right. Now, if I write five here, we have an error. The pizza marinara must be between zero and three. This is a, a, one of the validation rule that fails. Okay, now let's try to write something else here. 
uh, name olio picante is not mandatory while name it is it is and in fact we have the name field is required if we do some mistakes uh, all around just to do some test uh, we can say that uh, all fields will be uh, all, all error all mistakes will be uh, highlighted now I'm removing the at signs from the email address and changes uh, the free order that must match one of the okay uh, we have uh, just before the submission uh, bootstrap um, html5 validation so uh, we, we must write here the email for email text in the correct form let's submit now and we have uh, all the errors that we we have done in our form and the field name is required pizza marina has been pizza market must be between zero and three the selector free order is invalid now i want to show you how to trigger the email validation from the backend well, we need to modify a little bit the rule adding uh, these uh, other elements email we are telling to laravel that it must be validated as an email address and we have to remove from the html the um, email type and transforming it in text a simple text uh, in order to avoid the html5 validator so now let's uh, uh, delete the at signs and now we have the the email must be a valid email address i think that uh, both method must be implemented uh, in to to improve a better security html5 and uh, uh, backend validation as told before there are a uh, lots of rules from the value for the laravel 5 validator and i suggest you to go through the document official documentation and uh, try to learn as much as you can i think that the lesson now it's done and see you on the next uh, lesson if you enjoyed the video you can subscribe using the huge red button below and uh, please leave comment and suggestion using the social in the upper corner right see you on the next lesson bye bye